safety cars. Uh, the first two races, Tony Riccadello, who won yesterday's race under safety car, will start from the pole with Jordan Caruso, Angus Fogg and Ash Jarvis, Ryan Humphrey and Brad Shields on the third road today, Mark Duggan and Steve Lacey, Will Fircher and Anthony Cox, based on the grid that finished from yesterday's uh, race number two. Michael Robinson starts out of 11. Back to Scott Cameron. Ronan Murphy is in the field with Travis Condon back in 16th. Nick Smith starts out of 20 today. Down the field to Paul Bosher. Greg Boyle. Stephen Tomasi is back. We'll keep an eye on the number nine. Former champion in that beautiful Holden Calibra that's been around for 20 years now in the sport. And they've had to work hard on that overnight. They found a hairline crack in the uprights of the wing. And they've got involved with a company called New Beauty Fabrications up here who designed, built, and constructed that overnight, and they're ready to go. You Butte yes. Fabrications. Why yeah. you B U T E? <laughs> Sounds legit. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Yeah, well, I'm sure it will. He's coming from the tail of the field. Of course, Steve Lacey was in dramas. He went through two wings during practice and qualifying, but it looks like they've settled the dramas with that car now. But Ricky Dello and Caruso. About to square off one more time. Ricky Dello has a 40 point lead in the series. Of course, they'll join us on the streets of Surface Paradise. Another unknown for him when they hit up there. And it looks like Ronan Murphy is now peeling into pit lane. So he was trying to do that from the opposite oh, side before. Yeah. Son, of course, of Greg Murphy, part of our coverage and a legend of this famous racetrack at Bathurst, the Mount Panorama Motor Racing Circuit. And we're set to go racing in the Precision National Sports today. It's the finale their second last round of 2023. It's go time here on the main straight, even from the front row. Caruso on the outside. Ryan Humphrey pinches the front brake and they stay in formation through Hell Corner for the first time. And Caruso was, goes to the lead. Well, I was going to say Caruso really needds to win this start. cadello has got a very strong engine in that car and he, we can see that he blasts straight around the outside of the Audi. So, you know, the race is on now. Caruso is very fast across the top of the hill. So Caruso with a spare engine, it's out of their quote project car after damaging the main engine at the previous round at Sydney, drops back into second position. They've been having engine mapping issues with that car from the first race onwards. He went 202.5 in qualifying, went two seconds quicker than he did in practice. And now does the chasing with Tony Ricciardello, multi, multi, multi champion in sports sedan in that beautiful Alfa Romeo as they hit the mountain for the first time. And they'll all be squirming around. They've all, you know, you set your tyre pressures a little lower than what you want them for the race. So these first laps are usually squirming around on semi-cold tyres as they, they're getting up to temperature. So it's when you see the cars start to move around on the road a bit. That, that's what that is all about. But look at this Audi climb all over the back of the Alpha down through the S's and the Dipper here. He stays with Ricky Adello, but that Alpha has a big set of legs to stretch on. Conrod straight, that's Mark Duggan with Lacey just behind, and Ronan Murphy's return to the track. So whatever the issue was with the Mark Cars entry, but he's at the tail of the field and lots of work to do back in 20th position. A handful of cars didn't make today's race with some engine dramas for Matt Longhurst who did an engine change after practice on Thursday. Didn't get so far in qualifying. It's now Lacey makes the move. In the background of that shot, here's Brad Shields on Ashley Jarvis, who's high up in the point standings, this beautiful Holden Monaro. So they sweep under the bridge and pass the Ridges Hotel to complete the first lap. And uh, Angus Fogg is, is really hanging on here to Caruso. Uh, that's an amazing car. We talked about it yesterday. It sounds, got NASCAR engine in it. It sounds, you know, fantastic. So, um, but what a dice here. Since came from the rear of the field yesterday, he qualified really well. That's a very fast little fit that he's got there. Tucks in behind Ash Jarvis as they climb up Mountain Straight here. Shields, of course, originally from Bathurst, now lives in Canberra, pulls out to make the move at the breaking point to Griffins. Yeah, he just can't quite get it done under brakes, can he? I mean, it looks like it's got plenty of speed, but he just can't finish it off there. And yes, you heard correct, that is a Fiat out there. We weren't, weren't making that one up. That's part of the eclectic mix of cars that we have in this National Sports Sedan Series. Shields himself, a two-time New South Wales Sports Sedan Series champion back in 21 and 23. Does the chasing just ahead is Angus Fogg in that beautiful 1970 Ford Mustang that's been shipped over here. He raced at Sydney Motorsport Park at the previous round. 
and a former racer here himself in the 1000 back with Team Kiwi and last time out when the Touring Car Masters field was, was here oh. he won three of the four races. Cheeky. Yeah. Well, and since then they've given a bit of a birthday and hot up a little bit, which is why he's in the sports sedan race. Shields very fast down this hill. Car that's being built, developed by JS Racing, Joe said, who's done a development on this car. And while these two are battling, you see just behind is the West Aussie in Ryan Humphrey, the XE Falcon that's been consistently inside the top ten all weekend long. And again, the Fiat just menacing the mirrors of the Monaro just ahead as he pulled out a bit too early here. They'll go side by side under the Hino Bridge. Whoa. Just that looks extremely uncomfortable, yeah. but he's, he's got a good turn of speed and he's well up the inside of him this time. Good move. Nice and clean. And puts himself up into fourth position now by Ricky Dello has one and a half seconds to Jordan Caruso, four seconds back to Angus Fogg who runs in third, and Tomasi has come up to eighth position in all of that, and that Holden Calibra up in 16 positions. As we look at Ricciardello, the leader from Caruso, Fogg, Shills, and Jarvis in the sports dance here at Bathurst. So up to Griffins, and it shows you later here on the rest of the field. So Angus Fogg, who, again, he qualified 15th for the first race has had to pick his way through in each race now. Top three yesterday. It's a replay of how that went down. Watch this part here. Well, Ooh. yeah. And you can imagine that's a little car. He When he tucks in behind, he gets a great toe. And, uh, you know, did the old up and over there. You see him getting back around the other side and then diving hard down the inside because they both look to have about the same braking ability. But once he got the nose of that car in front, he was, uh, he was starting to check out. One thing it does do, that fit, is put the power to the ground nicely and he jumps away coming out of those corners. Here's Steve Lacey with the third wing on the back of this number 78. And the first failure looked more like a boomerang when it let go during practice. They missed the second practice session while they sent the team back to the team base in Sydney. Put another one up. That then failed a lap into qualifying. But they have rectified the issues and he runs right now in eighth position as we go back to... And looks pretty solid, doesn't it? Nearly half a second for Ricciardello. But they are just motoring on down the road from Angus Fogg. Some 11 seconds away. Big punch of flame from that beautiful Audi. In the hands of Jordan Caruso, who won the championship last year. And still has some work to do this year with one round to go. Not completely out of the picture. He takes one DNF from Ricciardello and he'll be right back in the mix. Beautiful slow-mo through the chase. And you see the big aluminium box in the middle of the car, right in the centre there. That's where they put the engine. They move it way back towards the rear of the car to get the centre of gravity right. But uh, that car is a beautifully made piece of kit and very, very successful. Here's Newman. You remember that car yesterday almost rolled down at the very last corner at Murray's. Yep. The yellow and black Falcon that's up into 14th position. The guys just ahead here, including Felt, Furcher and Robinson in the second of Monaro's. He was spun around yesterday. These guys just outside that top 10. There's still five minutes of racing remaining. These guys continue as they make their way into Hell Corner. Gap is four seconds. At the front, but we're watching Robinson making the move here on Will Furcher as they charge up Mountain Straight with five minutes of racing remaining in the National Sports Sedan Series. Their final race of the weekend here, supporting the Repco Bathurst 1000 here at Mount Panorama. And now he falls back into the hands of Newman, who's made his way back up from the tail of the field to be yeah. in 13th place. He's doing a really good job in this car and uh, very, very lucky not to roll it over yesterday, but he's pedaling pretty hard here and uh, he'll be gobbling up another car in no time at all. 205.4 is the quickest lap of the race for Jordan Caruso, who's flying again. He's in second position while we stay with Newman across the top of the mountain. These guys some 40 seconds away from the leading duo. Race that's been starting to settle down here. Well, I can't quite work out what's going on with the first two because uh, 
Lucadello put a nice gap on Crusoe, but he has come back with vengeance in this last lap and he's uh, got the gap down to 0.6 of a second. So it's very close at the front here. You can't help but think there's something not quite right with Crusoe's car, whether it's playing up with the engine a little bit or something, but he's just done his fastest lap of the race, which is two seconds faster than uh, Riccadello. So I think it's on at the front, but it's certainly on here. So Newman making a move on Furcher. There was just a whisper smoke from the Furcher car coming down to Forest Elbow. Don't think it was the brake lockup. Newman gets the job done nice and easy before the tip into the chase. And now goes after Robinson, who both he, Cox and Duggan have now just been given five second penalties on our screens as well. So he might get a few extra spots here in the process. It would be for maybe being out of start position. That commonly happens with the rolling start racing. They like to keep them in those rows and more so not to fan out. Yeah. Comes Duggan. Right hand side, in that beautiful Aston Martin. It is is a very pretty car, aren't they? The fancy move just covers off Lacey. Going up into Griffins, the Duggan family hotels entry. Meantime, back at the front, that has come right down, hasn't it? With a lap time of 203.6 last time by for Jordan Caruso. He thinks it's time to hit that go button and go after the number five. Just needs to be a little bit closer to try and dive down the inside. But you're right, that was out to nearly two seconds. Yeah. So maybe there was a mistake for Ricky Adello as Paul Boschert pushes back into the pits in the Worldcraft Engineering. That car was in the wars yesterday and seemingly his weekend is done in this penultimate round of the Precision National Sports Sedan Series. And again, Ricky Adello stretching the legs of the Alpha. This must be frustrating for Caruso. Meantime replay of Humphrey being Ooh. overtaken or or just I don't think it was a bump between he and Tomasi who's the big mover and shaker in this race up into fifth place now from the rear of the field that Holden Calibra the former national champion is on the charge but I don't think you'll catch these guys with 21 seconds no he's uh He's got about three seconds a lap on the, the cars in front of him, but these two are, are starting to put on a pretty good dice for us. Not quite sure have, what happened to Riccadello a couple laps ago, but he... Um... He's been helping the lap traffic now as yeah. well as we start to pick away at them. Travis Condon, this is where that car stopped on Thursday during practice, which forced them into an engine change. Up into the Goodyear cutting. So Caruso, this is where the Audi's been stronger all weekend. You watch him reel in the Alpha, but it's that big, long Conrad straight where Ricciardello just disappears. Across the top of the mountain they go again. They're both very nicely balanced. You know, we don't see the cars moving around too much or jumping, but there's no doubt that Caruso is the, the fastest of the two across the top here. He just doesn't quite get close enough to dive bomb him down into the uh, coming out of the dipper or, or uh, coming onto the main straight. So uh, he's close, just not quite close enough. Time is running out. We'll get one lap at the end of this. See the difference in line approaches there into the elbow. Yeah, and on it, Crusoe doesn't even bother to try and get a toe off him. He uh, <laughs> he's just running wherever he thinks he can. You can see the difference between the two to make their way underneath the Hino Bridge and towards the chase. And just on 294 kilometres an hour that time through. And Tony Riccadello. And they sound great, don't they? I wonder Robbo sets up that campsite down there. We saw him earlier today during the coverage. A big, small city set up. He's got there on the inside of the chase. That's who they come. Riccadello looking to score his second victory of the season as he starts the final lap. But we're guaranteed a championship finale when we go to the Boost Mobile Gold Coast 500 on the streets of Surface Paradise in the coming weeks. Be great to see them around the Concrete Canyon. The sound of these cars bouncing between the skyscrapers, that'll be something else. 100%, and we've got a great dice going on here also. So Newman 
And remember, these two ahead have both got five seconds added to their time, yeah. so he doesn't need to pass them. I'm not sure Newman will know that at this point in time because he's certainly uh, still closing up and pushing. It's Robinson, half 32. Heading down to start their final lap while Riccadillo and Caruso a long way up the road, some 50 seconds up the mountain now from these three. That's where they come to start their last lap, so won't need to worry about them overtaking here, but they're just another car to pass, aren't they? Well, it's always nice, all passing cars. Well, what's going on here? Let's start the approach into Hell Corner. That's a funny line. Yeah. Not the approach it normally takes, so Cox made a mistake going into that turn, but he's covered off Robinson nicely here. And will he get it done? No. No. With the answer. So they climb up through Griffin's Bend. This is Angus Fogg and Tomasi. And this was a move, so I can't say enough about Steve Tomasi today. The repair overnight to this car, he missed yesterday's race, but now finds himself in fourth position. It's down towards the chase we go for the final time. Riccadello and Caruso, they've been going at it all season long. And you would have thought after qualifying, it was going to be a Jordan Caruso clearance sale, but it hasn't been that way. 203.5 was the quickest lap of the race, but he's going to have to tuck in for second as Riccadello wins the race, wins the round in the penultimate round of the Precision National Sports Sedan Series here at Mount Panorama. Shields on his way down to the final turn. And it's going to be a fine twitchy, turn position. It? Yeah, a twitchy little car to drive. It certainly feels all the bumps as he takes the flag for third position, 20 seconds away. The driver of the race has to go to Tomasi from the tail of the field to finish inside the top five. Meantime, Jarvis and Humphrey will come home for sixth and seventh at the end of today's race. And the win going to Ricciardello, and he'll take the round on us here today as well. Caruso home for second. He'll be second outright for the weekend. Ash Jarvis will stand on the podium in third for the overall. Brad Shields finishing third in the race today. Tomasi from the back to fourth. Ryan Humphrey seventh. Back to Mark Duggan, Steve Lacey, and Anthony Cox. Uh, Duggan and Lacey getting those five-second penalties. So... Ricky Adolo picking up the win and the round as they get set to head to the Gold Coast for the next round of the championship. You can win one of 12 trips to the Supercar.